This presentation will address sports policy and the sports environment. Throughout this presentation, you will learn how the following points ensure that athletes and participants are safe in the sport that they play. You will refer to rules of sports and activities, modified rules for children, matching of opponents, use of protective equipment, and safe grounds, equipment, and facilities. Throughout the presentation, you will develop the skills to answer the following critical question. Critically analyse sports policies, rules and equipment to determine the degree to which they promote safe participation. It will focus on a range of policies and rules. However, heat rules and rugby scrum rules will be covered. We'll begin by looking at how rules of sports and activities can ensure that players can participate safely and successfully. The National Rugby League is a heavy contact sport and there are a range of rules to ensure that players are kept safe, such as no contact with the head or neck, otherwise known as a high tackle, no lifting above horizontal, otherwise known as a spear tackle, and of course, more recently, no shoulder charges. By having these rules in place, players are more likely to be kept safe and avoid hard tissue injuries, soft tissue injuries, and more serious injuries to the spine and also concussion. Rugby union scrums are important set plays in the game. They are also, however, places where serious injury can occur. Scrum rules are important to keep players safe. Recently, the International Rugby Board and the Australian Rugby Union initiated the Crouch Bind Set Engage Command. This is designed to make scrums safe, to ensure that players bind properly, and to reduce the force with which teams enter the scrum. It is designed to minimise scrum collapse and reduce the risk of head and spinal injury. The AFL is another game that has a range of rules in place to keep players safe. No deliberate striking, no pushing from behind, no deliberate contact to the head or neck and no deliberate contact below the knees are all designed to ensure successful participation but also safe participation. Likewise, there are a range of other sports that have specific rules. In hockey, the stick must not lift above the waist that's designed to keep players safe. In the sport of cricket, no deliberate bowling at the head or body. And in soccer, careless and reckless slide tackles are not allowed. Heat rules are important to consider for sports that take place in the summer months. Uh, the cricket, uh, tennis, AFL and NRL all have policies to deal with uh, participation in hot weather. They follow closely those that are listed by Sports Medicine Australia and they do include things like postponing in the event of really hot te uh, temperature, really high temperature, uh, checking with the Bureau of Meteorology before competitions take place, ensuring that events take place in the cooler, cooler parts of the day and also uh, limiting duration and postponing if necessary and ensuring regular drink breaks. In terms of summarising the role of these rules, it's re they really are in place to, to avoid injury. Direct injury, soft and hard tissue injuries, including contusions, fractures, dislocations, lacerations and abrasions, among many other. But they are also there to protect the participants and encourage participation of junior players. Moving on to modified rules for children. A range of sports have been modified to allow children to participate more effectively. Generally, they include uh, playing on smaller fields or courts, a shorter duration, including modified equipment such as smaller balls or, or, or implements such as rackets or bats, and reduced rules to allow the game to progress and be a little bit more fun for those involved and including more safety equipment. Now netball has its own version of, uh, of a modified game. It's called Netta Netball and you can see that there are various differences between uh, netball at the senior level and for those that play at the junior level. So shorter quarters, a smaller goalpost and a smaller ball and there are many other changes that occur but this is designed to keep young players interested and to ensure their safety. Similarly, Rugby League has two modified versions, mini footy for those uh, 
younger than nine, and also mod footy for those between nine and 12. Again, uh, smaller fields, smaller intervals or shorter intervals, uh, smaller goalposts, um, changes to rules such as no scrums, etc. Ensure that young players can engage and have fun and still be safe. It's important for rugby league to have these types of modified rules because it is a contact sport and young children need to be kept safe when they're playing contact sports. Walla Rugby is the rugby union version of a modified game. You can see similar changes to the rugby league. They do have have scrums, however, but they are non-contested scrums. They have shorter durations and they play with a small, smaller ball. Likewise, Auskick AFL, another modified game. Um, smaller fields, shorter durations, a smaller ball. And what's interesting about this game is that they encourage young players to rotate positions regularly and ensure that each player gets a turn playing in different roles to develop their skills. The Milo T20 Cricket is another game that is played uh, in schools and it is modified to suit younger players to ensure that they are safe. Moving on to matching of opponents. Now, players are often or participants are matched according to their skill level, age, gender, weight or growth and development. Now, when it comes to matching players according to their age, it's great to use cricket as an example. You can see that they've got various versions of the game set up to ensure that those uh, with fundamental skills are playing against uh, players that of similar skill level, and they're generally at that younger age group, five to six, and they don't progress to a full version of the game until age of nine. So that just goes to show that players are at that younger age, they need to be separated and playing against people of a similar age because they're at generally at a similar level of skill. So it's to ensure their safety and to ensure that the game is um, appropriate to their level of skill. And it's important to think about skill a little more deeply here and understand that the game of cricket is a game that's played with a very hard ball and playing against someone that is really skillful for example, a very skillful bowler can put the batsman at great risk if they don't have the skills to be able to, to, uh, to, to hit the ball. So that's why it's important to separate players based on their skill level. Representative players obviously play against highly skilled players because they have the skill level to be able to compete at that, uh, at that level. Um, a younger player or a player that doesn't have the skill level uh, is better off playing against someone of a similar skill level so that they can obviously compete with them but also keep themselves safe. A highly experienced bowler uh, bowling that hard cricket ball at a batsman that's not skilled enough could lead to a serious injury. Okay, The hard ball contacting the body could lead to a, a variety of direct injuries. Matching of opponents according to gender. The NRL is another good example here because with their mini and mod games uh, discussed earlier, boys and girls can actually play together. However, it's when they reach the age of 13 that they're encouraged to play in all-girl competitions. So that's the point in time where it's uh, suitable to separate them because it is a contact sport and boys and girls are growing at very different rates. So it's important to separate there to avoid injury and to ensure that the game is physically stimulating for both boys and girls. Matching of opponents according to weight is common in sports such as judo and boxing. And also, it has been trialled in the rugby codes. There has been some concerns recently about uh, really large uh, players playing against really small players and the risk of collision and all sorts of injuries, direct and soft tissue, uh, concussions and so on. And this has been trialled and some people actually really do like it. It hasn't actually been implemented um, formally as yet but it does have some benefits. Definitely in sports that involve uh, contact and collisions and use of force, um, separating according to weight could be a way of ensuring that players are kept safe. Moving on to use of protective equipment. For a game like cricket, if you watch it on TV, it's, it's not hard to see all of the padding that they wear, such as gloves, helmets, thigh pads, um, pads for the legs, and also 
pads and guards that protect other parts of the body, such as the reproductive organs. In the game of rugby, you'll often see players wearing headgear, uh, shoulder pads, and it's mandatory not just in rugby but in many other sports to wear a mouth guard to avoid uh, injury to the teeth and to the jaw. And also wearing football boots or studs to ensure that they are able to keep their balance in slippery conditions. In other sports such as soccer, you can see in the image that shin pads are used to avoid uh, contact with the shins and also the hockey keeper you can see with all of the padding on to avoid contact with the ball. Again, this protective equipment is designed to reduce the risk of soft and hard tissue injury. Moving on to safe grounds, equipment and facilities. This is all about the courts and the fields in which sport takes place. And things like post pads for rugby league and, and rugby union and AFL and netball any post on the field needs to be covered by a pad to ensure that if someone collides with it, it's a soft surface that won't actually injure the player. And fields and courts need to be flat, dry and level surfaces and obviously free from barriers and obstacles. And it's important that officials inspect grounds and surfaces to ensure that they're appropriate and free of any loose material, rubbish or glass or rocks or anything like that to avoid uh, injuries during the play. Now, recently, soccer goals have been uh, a concern in junior soccer environments and in schools where young people have been uh, swinging off the top crossbar, which has led to them falling over or falling on top of young people. So a new policy has been implemented by the Australian government to ensure that soccer goals, portable soccer goals, must be anchored to the ground with stakes or with um, sand weights weighing up to 200 kilograms, the anchor must be checked and coaches and teachers must ensure that students are not climbing and they must be stored safely. So this is another um, really important policy in place to ensure the safety of young athletes. Now as we finish this presentation it's important that you be aware of this critical question. Critically analyse the sports policies, rules and equipment to determine the degree to which they promote safe participation. For example, heat rules, rugby union scrum rules. Now critically analyze, critically means add a degree of depth. Analyze means make relationships between components and draw out and relate implications. And you really need to make reference to the rules, the modified rules, the matching of opponents, protective equipment and safe grounds. That's the important part of this question or the important content. And then you've also got to draw out the degree to which they promote safe participation. And this is where the critical analysis comes into play. We really want you to link to enhanced participation, safety, and how these policies and rules and equipment reduce the risk of injury. And we really want you to link back to the types of injuries and conditions that can be avoided as these policies, rules, and equipment types are actually implemented. So refer back to classifying injuries, direct, indirect, soft, hard tissue, etc., and that's how you draw out your implications and, and make relationships. Thank you for listening.